Okay, so let's work through these next two again. We're asked to go from standard form to vertex form uh, for both. So we're going to complete the square for uh, both of these here. So um, again, I'm going to separate the first two terms from the rest. So I'm going to factor uh, five out from both of those terms, which is going to make the coefficient of uh, the x squared term one. And then we're going to go ahead and complete the square. So we get x squared minus 8x plus, we take that coefficient, negative 8, multiply by 1 half and square it. Okay, so when we take negative 8 divided by 2, that's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. But we're not adding 16, we're actually adding 5 times 16. Okay, so that's plus 72. So 16 times 5 is going to be 80. So if I'm adding 80 there, I have to subtract 80 on the outside uh, to balance that expression, which is going to make y equal to 5 times. That trinomial is going to factor to x, and then the number inside of the parentheses here. So negative 8 over 2 is minus 4 squared, and then 72 minus 80 becomes minus 8. So that is the vertex form. The coordinates of the vertex there are going to be 4, negative 8. <clears throat> okay, we're going to do the same thing for 3. So again, we're going to separate those first two terms from the others. So we have y is equal to, I'm going to factor negative 6 out from those two terms. So when I do so, that leaves me with x squared. And then when I factor negative 6 out from the next term, it leaves me with plus 14x. And then we're going to separate the constant term negative 297. OK, so we get y equal to negative 6. Then we're going to complete the square. So that's going to be x squared plus 14x plus, we're going to take that coefficient 14, multiply by 1 half, so that's 14 over 2, and square that. So we have minus 297. And then what are we adding there? We are adding 7 squared, which is 49, but then we are multiplying that times negative 6. So 49 times negative 6 uh, that's going to be uh, negative 294. So if we are subtracting 294 there, we have to add 294 on the outside. Okay, and then we're just going to finish uh, factoring that trinomial. So this trinomial here is going to factor 2x, and then the number inside of the parentheses, which is uh, positive 7 squared, negative 297 plus 294 is minus 3. So the coordinates of the vertex here are negative 7, negative 3. Okay, <clears throat> so 4, we're actually given an equation in vertex form that we want to write in standard form. Okay, so we're going to go in the opposite direction. So if we want to write this in standard form, all we really want to do uh, is expand this entire quantity out. So if we multiply x plus 8 squared, that's multiplying x plus 8 times x plus 8. So when I FOIL that out, that gives me x squared plus 8x plus 8x plus 64, which is going to be x squared plus 16x plus 64. We're going to distribute 2 across all of those terms, and then we're going to add 6 at the end. So when I distribute 2 across everything, we get 2x squared plus 32x plus 64 times 2 is 128 plus 6. And then when I combine those constant terms, we get 2x squared plus 32x 
plus 134. All right, so that is that quadratic equation uh, written in standard form. Okay, so we're going to do a couple more examples here. The directions for the next two examples uh, ask us to solve the equation by completing the square. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to show you that this is not the only way to do the problem. Um, actually, with this first problem, it's going to be much easier for us to solve this problem by factoring. So I want to do that really quick, okay? So if we're going to solve any quadratic equation, first thing we want to do with a quadratic equation is move the terms to one side, okay? So I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides, and that's going to give me 7v squared plus 14v minus 21 is equal to 0. And when we look at all three of those terms, 7v squared, 14v, negative 21, those are all factorable by 7. So if I factor 7 out from all three terms, that leaves me with v squared plus 2v minus 3. And we can factor this polynomial right here using the factoring techniques that we looked at in class last week. So if I make my x on the side, the number that's going to go on top is negative 3. The number that goes on bottom is 2. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give the top number and add to give the bottom number. And those are 3 and negative 1. So what I can do then is I can take that middle term and split it into two terms. So that's going to be v squared plus 3v minus v minus 3. And then I'm going to factor that resulting polynomial by grouping. So uh, I can factor a v out of the first two terms, which leaves me with v plus 3. I want to factor a negative 1 out of the next two terms, which also leaves me with v plus 3. v plus 3 is the common factor. So when I factor that out, that leaves me with v minus 1. And if we want to find where that product is 0, that's either going to happen when v plus 3 is equal to 0 or v minus 1 is equal to 0. And when we solve both of those equations, we get v is equal to negative 3 or v is equal to 1. And those are your two solutions for that equation. And again, I think that that is the most efficient way to work through a problem of this type. If you can factor, factoring is the best technique. And if the problem doesn't give you a specific method for solving the equation, use a method that works best. The problem is this one here does give us a specific method for solving. Okay. So the first step for us is going to be exactly the same. We want to subtract 5 on both sides. And then what we're going to do to complete the square is we're going to take the equation on the left-hand side, which is written in standard form, and we want to write it instead in vertex form. Okay, so we're going to separate these two terms from the constant term. And I know I have to factor a 7 out from those first two terms in order to make the coefficient of v squared 1. So when I factor 7 out, that leaves me with v squared plus 2v minus 21 is equal to 0. And then we're going to go ahead and complete the square now. Okay, so to complete the square, we get v squared plus 2v, we're going to add uh, the coefficient of v, which is 2, times 1 half, and then we're going to square that. So what are we adding there? We're adding 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So we're adding 1, but then we're multiplying that by 7. So really we're adding 7, so we have to subtract 7 on the outside to balance. Okay, 
which gives us seven times. Now this trinomial is going to factor to V, and then the number inside of the parentheses, which is positive one squared. Negative 21 minus seven is minus 28, and that's equal to zero. And then we're just gonna solve this equation for V. Okay, so we're gonna add like a couple of additional steps, but they're really easy to work through. Okay, so if we wanna solve for V, we're gonna add 28 to both sides. Divide both sides by seven. And then if we wanna solve for V, we're gonna take the square root of both sides, which on the left-hand side, that gives us the absolute value of V plus one, which is equal to the square root of four, which is two. And then we can drop the absolute value bars, putting a plus or minus on the right-hand side, which is gonna make V equal to negative one plus or minus two. So our two solutions are V is equal to negative one minus two, which is negative three, and V is equal to negative one plus two, which is one. So we get the same two answers uh, as we did using the technique of factoring. It takes us a little bit longer to get there, but the cool thing about completing the square is completing the square always works provided that your equation has solutions. Okay, factoring does not always work. Okay, I wanna see you guys try number two uh, using the same technique. So you have seven R squared plus 14 R plus seven is equal to five. Okay. So again, our process is the same. Uh, we're gonna subtract five on both sides. So we're comparing uh, an expression to zero. So when I subtract five on both sides, we get seven R squared plus 14 R plus two is equal to zero. And then we're gonna separate the first two terms from the constant term. So I'm gonna factor a seven out which again leaves me with r squared plus 2r. And then we're going to complete the square. So we have 7 times r squared plus 2r plus, we're going to take the coefficient of r, which is 2, multiply by 1 half, and then square it. Okay, so what did I add there? I added 1 but again, we're multiplying one by seven, so really we didn't add one, we added seven, so we have to subtract seven uh, on the outside. Okay, so that's gonna be equal to zero, which means we have seven times, uh, that trinomial is gonna factor to r plus one squared, and then two minus seven, that is gonna become negative five, is equal to zero. We're gonna add five to both sides. Divide both sides by seven. And then take the square root of both sides. So I'm running out of space. I'm gonna continue working it up here. So on the left-hand side, that gives me the absolute value of r plus one equal to so I'm going to break this up into the square root of 5 over the square root of 7. And then I'm going to rationalize that denominator multiplying the top and bottom by rad 7. Okay, so when I do that, that gives me the absolute value of r plus 1 equal to, when I multiply across, we, we get, I'm sorry, one step ahead of myself. Uh, when I multiply across rad 5 times rad 7 is rad 35. And on bottom, rad 7 times rad 7 is 7. And then I can drop the absolute value bars by putting a plus or minus in front of the expression on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. 
So we get negative 1 plus or minus rad 35 over 7. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 1 and I'm going to write it with a denominator of 7. So that way I can take the left-hand side and combine into a single fraction, okay? Which is going to make r equal to negative 7 plus or minus rad 35 all over 7. Okay, and that's going to give you your um, <clears throat> solution for, or solutions for uh, that particular equation. Okay, last two examples we're going to look at uh, ask us to solve each equation by taking square roots. Okay, and these are like really easy. They're easier than what we did uh, in the previous example. Okay. So when you look at these two equations, neither of them have the linear term. They only have like squared terms and uh, constant terms. So if we want to solve these quadratic equations, um, the best way for us to do so is to isolate uh, our variable. Okay, so for number one, we can subtract two on both sides, which gives us six n squared equal to, when I subtract 2, we get 264. And then I can divide both sides by 6, which makes n squared equal to 6 goes into 26 four times, and then 6 goes into 24 four times as well. So we get n squared is equal to 44. And then we can take the square root of both sides so the square root of the left-hand side gives us the absolute value of n. The square root of 44 on the right-hand side, I can break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. And then I can drop the absolute value bars, putting a plus or minus on the right-hand side. So the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 11. So those are your two solutions to that equation. And I can do the same thing for the next equation as well. Okay, so again, we only have a variable squared and constant term, so I can isolate the variable. So I'm gonna subtract five on both sides. So when I subtract five, uh, the right-hand side becomes 189. I can then divide both sides by three. So three goes into 189 63 times. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of the left-hand side gives me the absolute value of r. The square root of the right-hand side, uh, rad 63, I can break that up into rad 9 times rad 7. And then I can get rid of the absolute values by putting a plus or minus on the right-hand side. So the square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 7. So our two solutions here are r is equal to plus or minus. 3 rad 7. Okay, so that now gives us three techniques that we can use for solving quadratic equations. We have the technique of factoring that we looked at last week, and then today we looked at the process of completing the square, and in the last two examples, uh, we took a look at the process of the square root method. Okay, uh, which is going to leave us one more uh, that we're going to look at in class later this week, which is the quadratic formula. Okay, but I wanted to do completing the square first because uh, completing the square is like what we actually use to derive the quadratic formula. All right, so that'll wrap up today's lesson. Hope you guys had a nice weekend. We'll see you in class tomorrow. Take care.